Okay, in the last video we talked about slope. In this video we're going to talk about something called slope intercept form. Now, say your friend came to you and said, I'm thinking of a line, and I want you to guess this line. I'm going to tell you this piece of information. The slope of my line is one half. Can you find the line? You know that the slope is one half, and that's rise over run. So for every point you travel upwards, you travel to the right two units. So you might say, okay, I have a line that looks something like that that has a slope of one half. But there was no reason for me to start right here at the origin. I could have started at any point. If I started at the point, say, 0, 2, I could draw a line with the slope of 1 half, and it would look something like this. And you'll quickly realize that there are actually an infinite number of lines that have a slope of 1 half. So I guess my point is, you need two pieces of information to figure out the equation of a line. You need 1, you need the slope, and 2, you need a point on the line. In this video, we're going to talk about the scenario where we have the slope and one specific point on the line, specifically the y-intercept. So if your friend told you, I'm thinking of a line, and it crosses through the y-intercept 0, negative 4, you would know that you would start down here at 0, negative 4, and you would count out your points, and you could find the, the exact line that your friend is looking for. Let's take this line and move it over onto a graph by itself. So right here is the graph of a line that has a slope of 1 half, and it has a y-intercept of the point 0, negative 4. My question now is, what is the equation of that line? As it turns out, it's really easy to figure that out. In this case, our line is going to be y equals 1 half x minus 4. And it is no coincidence that the equation of this line has a half in it, and its slope is 1 half. And it's also not a coincidence that this line has a y-intercept that goes through 0, negative 4, and that we're subtracting 4 from the 1 half x. Now, in general, the equation of a line in slope-intercept form can be written like this right here. The y and the x always stay in the equation in slope-intercept form. The m is the slope of the line, and the b is actually just the y value of the y-intercept. Now, you're going to go into a lot more depth about where this equation comes from in class. In this video, we're just going to go through a few more examples using this formula like this one right here. Find the equation of the line with a slope of negative 3 and a y-intercept of 0, 8. Hit pause on your browser and see if you can do it. Alright, so this is just like the last problem. y and x are going to stay in the equation, but right here in front of the x we're going to put the slope, which happens to be negative 3 in this case. And right here we're going to put the y-value of the y-intercept, which in this case happens to be 8. So that's it. It's that easy. If we're given a slope and a y-intercept of a line, we can find the equation of that line really easily. Let's try to do it the other way around. Given the equation of a line, can you pick out the slope and the y-intercept? Well, I should remind you that this is slope-intercept form for a line, and this line looks to be written in the exact same form. So if that's the case, then this two-thirds right here represents m, which is the slope, and this negative 4 here represents the y value of the y intercept. So to answer the question, the slope of this line is 2 thirds, and the y intercept is a point. The x value is always 0, and the y value in this case is given to us as negative 4. Okay, well let's take all that information and let's actually graph this line. Same line, the slope is 2 thirds, the y intercept is negative 4. So the way that you would graph this is you start with the y intercept, you count down to the point 0, negative 4, and starting with that point we have to count our slope. So rise over run is two-thirds. So for every two steps we rise, we run three steps. We go up two, over three. We can also start back at our original point and go down two, and left three. So we have a bunch of points that all form a straight line. That is the graph of the equation y equals two-thirds x minus four. All right, let's keep going. Now, given a line that's already graphed, can we find the equation of that line? Well, what we need is two pieces of information. We need the y-intercept, so in this case, the y-intercept appears to be negative 2, and we need a slope. So it looks to me like for every, what, 1, 2, 3 values we go down, we go to the right by 1. This is actually going to give us a negative slope. I said the rise was negative 3, and the run was a positive 1. Negative 3 over 1 is just negative 3. So you may be asking, what if we went the other direction? What if we went with a rise of 1, 2, 3 from our starting point, and went with a run to the left of 1? Well, a rise of 3 upwards is a positive 3, but a run left of 1 represents a run of negative 1. So we're actually still going to get 
negative 3 is our slope, no matter which way we do it. Okay, put all that information together, we have a slope of negative 3 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 2, and you have yourself the equation of a, of a line. y equals negative 3x minus 2. Let's look at another example. Now sometimes you'll be given the equation of a line, and it won't be in the appropriate form. Again, the slope-intercept form that we're talking about is always y equals mx plus b. So y needs to be by itself in order for an equation of a line to be in this slope-intercept form. So if we're looking for the slope at a y-intercept of a line, and it's given to us in this form here, the first thing we need to do is we need to get y by itself. So to me, that means subtracting 3x from both sides of the equation. When we do that, we get 2y equals 6 minus 3x, and then we have to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So on the left now, we have y by itself, which was our goal. On the right, what we can do is we can split up this numerator into two pieces. In other words, we can divide 6 by 2 and get 3, and divide 3 by 2 and just get the fraction 3 halves. Don't forget to leave your x in there. Now we have the equation of our line in a form that looks pretty close to the y equals mx plus b. The only difference is the order of these terms on the right side. Fortunately, because these two terms are added, we can just switch them. As long as we keep the signs the same, we're okay. So fortunately, we can write this line in the form y equals negative 3 halves x plus 3. Now, it's really easy to pick out that negative 3 halves is your slope, and that your y-intercept is going to be the point 0, 3. So once you have an equation in the appropriate form, this form right here, y equals mx plus b, it's really easy to find the slope and the y-intercept. The only difficulty is getting the equation into that form. Okay, let's get you a quick quiz. Two problems. On both problems, I want you to find the slope and the y-intercept of the given line. Alright, good luck and I'll see you in the next one.